Hello, friends, fellow lovers of all things art. Today, I want to talk to you all about a writer who's become prominent, gained a lot of influence in Hollywood over the last few years, J.R.R. Woken. If you have an existing story, no matter how old or beloved, once the check clears, Woken will gleefully remove the problematic elements and adapt it for a modern audience. Woken's motto is ideology above all else. His goal is to force his agenda on every story that's already been told, one way or another. All it takes is a big enough hammer. J.R.R. Woken hates anybody who he believes to have more talent than he does. But at the same time, he has the arrogance to believe that he can make any story better. Hey, wait a minute, Randy. How can Woken think that somebody has more talent than he does and at the same time think that he can do better? Cognitive dissonance, my friend. Cognitive dissonance, also known as delusion. Woken never met an authoritarian or corporation he didn't like. Again, as soon as the check clears, he's more than happy to prostrate himself at their feet and lick their boots. As much as Woken loves authority corporations, he hates the people who appreciate the stories he's been brought in to change. Y'all see, these fans like, advocate, support problematic ideas. They refuse to listen to their betters who are telling them the right way to think. One of the reasons J.R.R. Woken is so anxious to suck up to authority corporations he has incredibly thin skin. He doesn't respond well to criticism. Woken likes to lurk in stream chats, comment sections, message boards, looking for anybody who dares criticize any of his work. When the attacks from Woken's sock puppet accounts don't shut up the critics, he and his fellow travelers agitate, rile up all their convenient dupes, useful idiots, and then send them out to do the dirty work. Woken's song and dance is starting to wear thin. Public's on to what he's up to. They don't like it. His projects aren't making money. So he's been forced to adapt, adjust. He's finding stooges, failed writers, a woman holding her boss's office door shut, activists. It doesn't matter who they are, where they come from, their qualifications, or if they don't have any qualifications. As long as they check all the right boxes and are willing to go along to get along, they get the credit, take the fall, and J.R.R. Woken gets to continue taking existing stories and changing them for a modern audience. Blah! Randy, that sounds horrible. But if Woken is hiding behind other people's names, how will we recognize his work? <laughs> That's easy. Ideology above all else. J.R.R. Woken's work is as predictable as the sunrise. Case in point, Rings of Power, Season 2, Episode 5. J.R.R. Tolkien. No, no, not Woken. Incompetent hack. I'm talking about Tolkien, the literary giant, the guy that single-handedly invented the entire genre of fantasy. That guy, J.R.R. Tolkien, was a deeply religious man. He wrote a story about good versus evil, about friendship, loyalty, and self-sacrifice. He told a story about heroes of all shapes and sizes who, despite their flaws, were able to put aside their differences with each other so that they could unite to defeat pure evil. Friendship, loyalty, self-sacrifice, heroes, those are ideals. <gasps> That's aspirational. No, 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 no. We can't do that. That's verboten. The ideas that Woken wants to insert? There is no such thing as good and evil. It all just depends upon your perspective. Woken also believes you can never portray a woman in a negative light, ever. And you must portray women as being superior to men in all things at all times. Having said all that, Woken just can't help himself. He has to show everybody exactly how smart he thinks he is and exactly how much contempt he holds for the source material 
and the audience. In episode three, our boy Karl Marx is made king of Numenor. How? Don't think about it. It's stupid, so don't think about it. In episode five, Karl Marx Jr. is tasked with eliminating all opposition to daddy's rule. He shows up at a religious ceremony, shuts it down, kicks everybody out. The priest wants to take the religious icon. Old Jr. walks over, picks up the icon, and then very pointedly drops it, smashing it to smithereens. Subtle woken, subtle. That icon represents three things. Tolkien's lore, the audience, and religion itself. Woken is telling us exactly what he thinks of all three. Wait a minute, Randy. The baddie dropped the icon. Why would Woken represent himself with a baddie? <laughs> There's no good and evil, just perspective. And whose perspective do you think Woken would identify with? Woken identifies with the group that has overthrown the old power structure, who are trying to destroy old customs, traditions, and beliefs, who want to replace the old religion by becoming gods themselves. But Randy, Junior stabs somebody in the back. You honestly think Woken has a problem with that? The ends justify the means. Think it through. What has Woken shown that he's willing to do in real life? Woken is willing to use his minions to gang up on somebody, mob violence, all so that Woken can take away their livelihood, their reputation, the livelihood and reputations of their families and friends, all because they dared to speak out against a TV show, a movie, video game. When somebody tells you they have no morals, believe them. Good old Junior gets into a fight with Curly. Who's Curly? Doesn't matter. Curly gets good old Junior down and either dislocates his shoulder or breaks his arm. You hear a very distinct crunch. Curly has Junior at his mercy. He lets him go. Turns his back on him. Stupid. And of course, you know it's going to happen. Good old Junior gets up and then proceeds to run his sword all the way through Curly's body, back to front. <laughs> Where to begin with this one? Okay, let's just assume that good old Junior just has a dislocated shoulder, the lesser of the two evils. I've had a dislocated shoulder, given to me by somebody who did not have my best interest at heart. I also have a very high tolerance for pain. I don't like pain, but I can put up with a lot. With your shoulder out of socket, Sure, you can swing your other arm, but you ain't going to like it, and you're not going to be able to generate as much power and leverage as you normally can. Even when the shoulder's put back in the socket, it can take 30, 45 minutes before you're even close to being normal again. And yet, we are supposed to believe noodle arms here with at bare minimum a dislocated shoulder is still able to split curly like a Christmas goose. I call BS. And then there's the problem with the stabbing itself. Not only did Noodle Arms with a dislocated shoulder split Curly like a Christmas goose, he drove his sword through Curly's spine and his sternum. Yeah, right. And then there's another problem. Let's assume that the sword somehow missed the spine and sternum. Wait a minute. How do I know so much on this particular topic? Oh, I watched a video. You know, you could learn a lot from that Shadowversity guy. Even me, some random guy with absolutely no first-hand knowledge on the subject matter. I said no first-hand knowledge. I even know when you go to shiv somebody, front, back, sideways, it doesn't matter. You don't try to put your blade through the ribs like this. You turn it flat so it slides between the ribs. Even if we assume Noodle Arms missed spine and sternum, he went through the part where the ribs attach to the spine and sternum. They ain't moving. Which means he cut through multiple ribs, both sides. Yeah, right. When Woken is engaging in a power fantasy, wish fulfillment, 
showing exactly what he thinks of Tolkien's lore, the audience. Details, details. Disa, Disa, Disa. I haven't talked much about Disa in my critiques of the Rings of Power, but she's a classic example of what happens when you have ideology above all else. Characters become incredibly stupid, evil even, when women have to be right at all times. When a woman has to make every decision that drives the story, and when a woman has to be portrayed as being superior to a man in all things at all times. Quick little side note, every design decision is a conscious choice. It's meant to be that way. What's the symbolism in this scene? A strong, independent, diverse woman is shown to be in a position of power over a blonde woman. And the blonde woman is a slave. In earlier episodes of season two, Prince Durin, Deesa's husband, has had a falling out with his father, the king. Prince Durin has lost his title, social position, and wealth. He and his family are now forced to rub elbows with the unwashed masses. Deesa ain't happy. At the very first opportunity, Deesa puts the king in his place, tells him he's being an arrogant, stubborn, prideful man. And then she proceeds to lecture him on what he should do. Deesa then goes home and confronts her husband, Prince Doran. And she tells him he's allowing his family to suffer all because he's an arrogant, stubborn, prideful man. Deesa demands that Prince Doran make peace with his father. Why? Because woman. Prince Doran says, hey, even if I wanted to make peace, my father refuses to see me out of my hands. Deesa says, we will make him see you. Hey, let's go see those elves. They can help us. When Prince Durin, Deesa show up in Eregion, Celebrimborn and Sauron say, you need help? We got you covered. It just so happens we have a special gift made especially for you, a ring. Here, take it. Prince Durin's like, no, 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 I'm good. I don't want anything to do with that. Something doesn't smell right here. Uh, no, you just keep it. Dees is the one that says, take it. It will give us power. The plot dictates that the ring has to move from Celebrimborn and Sauron's hands in Eregion into King Durin's hands in Casa Doom. But the rules dictate the prime mover the one making the key decisions that allow that movement to happen must be a woman. Disa is now responsible for the destruction of Casa Doom. Can't have that. Now we got to find a way out of this corner. King Durin puts on the ring and suddenly he's solving all the dwarves' problems. Another side note. Come to find out the dwarves couldn't find the sunlight through just a couple of inches of stone. Ooh, quite the masons there. Suddenly, Deesa no longer cares about Prince Durin making peace with his father. Why? Reasons. She now demands that Prince Durin convince his father to take off the ring, destroy it, because she now realizes it's evil. How does she know this? Woman. Deesa and Prince Durin are in the market while she's hectoring him about what he needs to do. She wants to buy something. She negotiates a price because she's superior. Prince Doran doesn't want to pay because he's selfish, greedy, and stingy. Deesa negotiates a final price. She demands Doran give her the money. Doran says, fine, you can have it. Gives her the whole purse, walks off. As soon as Prince Doran turns his back, Deesa gives the merchant more money than she agreed to. J.R.R. Woken thinks that he has portrayed Prince Durin as a selfish, greedy, stingy, arrogant prick. He also thinks that he's portrayed Princess Deesa as kind, caring, just, and noble. In reality, he's shown Prince Durin to be a doofus, and Princess Deesa is a backstabbing, lying, manipulating... Li Once Deesa gets her plot device, I mean orb, she promptly drops it. It magically rolls through the market, down a corridor, into an abandoned space. 
Once Disa finally catches up with her plot to, I mean, orb, she finds a space we may or may not have seen before. Disa does some stone singing and hears a horrible roar. She has woken up something evil that lives in the bottom of Casa Doom. I mean, if you're going to be technical, Disa is the reason why the rings are in Casa Doom in the first place. And there is a point that, yeah, she did wake up the Balrog. However, Disa was the first person to recognize that the ring was evil. Yes, Prince Durin recognized the ring was evil right from the beginning, had to be convinced by Princess Disa to bring the ring back to Casa Doom, but he was persuaded by Disa to bring the rings back to Casa Doom. So technically, and we're talking technicalities here, technically Disa was the first one to recognize the rings were evil. Yes, you have a point. Disa did wake up the Balrog. But she told everybody, stop mining, especially in the deep parts. They didn't listen. That means whatever happened in Casa Doom wasn't Disa's fault. Ideology above all else, including logic and common sense. Meanwhile, back in Eregion, Celebrimborn and Sauron are trying to make some rings for men. Things ain't going well. The greatest craftsman the elves ever produced and one of the greatest beings of evil just can't quite figure out how to make it work. Don't worry, there's a woman for the job, Celebrimborn's assistant. She figures out what alloy to add to the ring to make it work, makes it without telling anybody, then puts it on, goes to that spooky place Frodo goes to. She now knows the ring is evil. Celebrimbor doesn't believe her. Sauron lies to her, manipulates and deceives her. No, 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 you don't understand what you saw. Poor women, always being lied to, manipulated and deceived by evil men. But Disa just lied to, manipulated and deceived Prince Durin. Ah, don't think about it. Poor women. Don't worry, Elendil gets put in his place by a woman too. Elendil tells Queen Regent Muriel, now deposed, I would not be the man I am today without you. And Queen Regent Muriel, now deposed, says, I know. You say you want to be able to recognize the work of J.R.R. Woken? Just look at any older story that has been remade recently. If you see the baddies being portrayed in a sympathetic light and the good guys are shown to be no better than the baddies, you're on the right track. If women are never wrong, no matter what they do, getting warmer. If women have to be shown always in a superior position to men at all times, bingo! At any rate, I hope I've given you all something to think about. And until next time, y'all be safe. If you all are still here, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. While you're at it, why don't you like this video, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell. You can hear me yammer on about something else next time. And feel free to share this video far and wide. Please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment.